If you've been with us for a while at Nail the Mix, then you've probably heard of this incredible mixing technique that Machine refers to as insides, outsides. Machine first blew everyone's minds with this back in his first Nail the Mix appearance with Lamb of God, and we have seen it here with Will Putney as well. But now Machine is back showing how he is able to get a massive bottom end and a super exciting mix by implementing this technique for suicide silence. Check it out and maybe give it a go on your next mix. Let's turn, let's collapse all the folders or all the track stacks. Look at this very basic stuff, get a quick balance and then move on to the summing. Okay, pretty good. I'm gonna show you guys the two the two main pre-mastering mix buses, the insides and the total outsides, right? Here they are. You can see that everything here, except this samples, everything is going to 31 or 32, right? These are my two lanes. All everything, all the cars are driving. They went down to this highway, which is these individual buses. These fed into this off ramp, I guess. I'm just making stuff up right now. <laughs> this is off ramp. There's two places. This like the pre master, and the total inside has everything I want on it. It has an extreme amount of compression. The whole concept of this is I love some compressing mixes, but it causes problems because for all you guys, I don't know, and I, even especially, I really want to talk and connect with the the guys that also mix metal where there's a lot of very, very busy kick information. I didn't start mixing metal. And when I did, I wanted to comply all the sum compression that I love from this more sparse music. Because as the compressor's working around these elements, you know, what is what does compression do? It's listening to the input and it's reacting on the energy of that input. If you guys that have mixed a lot of metal and have a little more experience, will very much relate to this. When it comes to certain elements like bass or double kick, or subby things that are busy or doing a lot of energy, it's going to squash that compression down and kind of ruin your mix. I'll explain by showing you in, in greater detail. Pretty much everything is going to the inside bus right now. And I really want to, I want to start there. I'm going to move my kick over there, actually. It's 31. Just curious. Okay, both inside and outside buses are muted and we hear nothing, which is success. That means everything, everything in this whole production is going to one of those two places. At the moment, pretty much everything's going to the inside bus. The only thing on the outside bus is the sub sub portion of the bass. Why? Because I'm about to squash the crap out of the inside bus. And that sub portion of the bass is going to really mess with that. Let's just stop talking and start listening. All right, let me lower this. Brace yourself for some the badass is about to begin, fellas. Okay, what are you thinking right now? You think this motherfucker's crazy. That's so much compression. Sounds dope, but you're thinking that shit's fucking nuts. That's nuts. So basically, what's happening here is this is what I'm doing. I'm actually double compressing <laughs> into the inside bus. This first one, this again, this beautiful solo compressor is subtle over easy compression. It's not doing too much. And then I'm into this supercharger compression, which is totally, totally colored and dangerous. 
It's an awesome, over the top squashing. Even I'm even adding a little bit of saturation to it. And it is just making it sound so in your face and dangerous, but there's going to be problems, right, dudes, right, plays? It's going to be problems. What compression is what some compression is. And I'm, I'm not going to take too much time, but this is this is really important to understand. We all know compression. We all use it all the time. But what is compression? OK, compression is your music goes through it and it's listening to the input and it's reacting on that and it's raising and lowering the volume based on what it's getting, what it's listening to. Things that carry greater energy are going to make the compression move much, much more. What has a ton of energy? Well, drums have instant are spiky, have instant moments of high energy and they they hit the threshold of your compressor and make it react make it move things with low end carry a lot of energy it's like why when you have a big pa system the subs like take these huge amps because it takes a lot of energy to a sub speaker is moves slow and a big distance it takes a lot of energy to do that right if i was to wave my hand up and down Big movements for a long time. I get tired pretty fast, but it was a tweeter high end. It's just, it would just be these tiny little movements. If I was to wiggle my finger real fast for a long time, I wouldn't get that tired because it doesn't take that much energy. So these low end elements like sub on the bass guitar or the, or kick drum are really, really affecting your compressor. Now, this is how I get away with it. I want to give you a visual. I don't have a visual with these two compressors. Let's take a different, let's take a logic compressor to explain this. I really like how this does this. I'm going to I'm going to squash my mix with this for a second. Okay. I like this graph mode. Look at this. Let me blow this up to 200%. Okay, guys, take a good look at this. What do these things represent? So there's this dark part, which is your music, and there's that white line. The white line is the volume change that your compression is doing, right? Let's take the compression off. So there's no white line. And if I took the drums, if I muted the drums. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? There you go. I lost you. Okay. If I muted the drums, here's the black area. That's the guitars. They're not moving that much. They're pretty sausage and even, right? If I turn the drums back on. Look at those big spikes there. What those are doing. So that's the energy going to the compression. I'll turn my compression back on. So it makes sense that it makes sense that when those transients hit, bang, that moment of energy, that white knob ducks down at the same time. So as your as your as your things hit, kick, snare, boom, bam, the things that are even, your guitar, your guitar, your bass, may if your vocal, if you're sending the vocal in there, are going to duck down in volume in that moment of attack. That's the white line. One more time. So as those things hit, bang, it's lowering the volume. This, so you get that now, right? Mm -hmm. That's a kind of interesting, very basic elementary way of looking at compression. That is in essence why it's badass. <laughs> That's the dance, the sound of compression as we like it. It's that it's taking those energetic moments and it's moving the volume in and around them. So this is what puts it in your face. This is what makes it sound big, present, dangerous, fat, evil, because it's enabling you to, when the drums or the, the spiky things hit, it's fooling you because it's ducking those guitars, momentarily ducking those guitars out of the way and bringing them back up. So it makes everything sound loud, you know, because it's like, yes, it may shape the attack on your drums, but they're still going to poke through. And, and in between those hits, those guitars are coming back up in volume. That's the essence of what sounds so cool about that. That's like the dance. And the problem I found in metal, guys, is that I was some compressing so little because I had problems with my energy, because I had these 
double kick moments, like do, 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 which floor out the energy. And then it just, it's holding those guitars down and then making them disappear and wussing them out. It's too many spiky events. All this, all this busyness in metal. There's too many spiky events screwing this up. So what I needed a way to do, extremely compress, but I needed a way to remove parts that were causing a problem. Hence, the total outsides. That's what they're there for. So I can take, and in this case, I'm going to take more so the double kick stuff and and put more of those on the outside. What's on the total outsides? Nothing, right? Nothing. That compressor is not there. Insides are these, are it's doubly slamming through compression. Total outsides, there's nothing. So, and now this goes to a much further detail. I can, I can put this, I can put the total outsides on a, on a bus here. I can either put whole elements outside or I can, with, with a bus send, I can blend a portion of it to the total outsides. So I have this incredible creative control of being able to do what I want, have this great dance, have this great pumping, but yet be in control of these spiky or subby moments not ruining the picture. Now that you've got that concept in mind, watch me work. And I'm going to take, I'm going to work just from these buses and I'm going to, I'm going to work with, with that moving some things. It's not going to be as crazy as it sounds now, but I'm going to move carefully and creatively certain things to the outsides. Here's everything most, oh, sorry. Here's Here's everything but the sub of the base going to the inside. I'll put the sub. I'm going to put the sub to the everything on the insides right now. It's going to be crazy. I put the total sub portion of the base to the outsides. Allowing that to dance better because that constant sub would just be holding that sucker down. That's no good. But what I'll do instead is I do want my bass sub to dance. So what I'll do is I'll take a key spike. I'll take a key spike from the kick and put it on the bass sub. Key spike on the kick is 25. So the compressor will be listening to the key spike, blip, blip, blip of the kick. And every time the kick hits, this thing will dance down for me. So I've got this thing pumping every time the kick hits. That's pretty far down, even at the volume. There it is. 